Praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Rise up and praise him. Rise up and lift him up. Rise up and glorify him to the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the universe. He is God and there's nobody like him. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing to be amongst uh, those who are alive and well. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, our God is good. Praise him who loads us daily with benefits. So we're here this morning to get today's benefits. Amen. In Jesus' name. Good morning, Sister Veronica. I said, we're here this morning. I don't know about you, you know, but I want him to give me today's benefits, you know, the load for today. Because I recognize that, you know, if I don't get that load, how, how, you know, uh, Sister Cheryl, yesterday, I was kind of like paying attention to the news, but I wasn't. So, uh, the part, then I kind of like did again. You know, apparently a designer, uh, you know, probably one of the top designers, I think committed suicide. You know, I was trying to, I was like, you know, I wasn't so much, then I, I kind of like tried to listen to it. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, something about depression or that's it. You know, um, Kate Spade. I didn't know her, you know, like, you know, the name didn't sound familiar to me. So I was like, who is this person that they keep talking about on the news? And when I paid attention, I thought, like, oh, wow. Listen to me. That's why I keep saying, listen, don't let nobody, you know what I'm saying, take you off course. Because listen to this now. See, Sister Cheryl, Sister Veronica, she had the money. She had the house. She didn't have a house. She had a mansion. She had the husband, the child. Most of the stuff that you and I might be focused on when we're praying, what just now, she had it. She had it. But yes, still, there was a void on the, because what just now, she had the opportunity, right, or she had the time to even write a note. That means that she, whatever it was, was weighing down on her. That she couldn't take it no more. Listen to me, I keep saying this, listen, you know, I don't, and, and, and I believe most of us, we, we, you know, the value, what we're doing, the, the foundation that we've built, some of us, we've even gone past building the foundation, you know, the oppression that we've lifted up, listen to me, family members who you don't even know are going through those challenges because, you know, they smile and they laugh at you, but secretly you don't know what they're battling. And that little, you know, that, see, see that, that, this little clap that you do, some of you, you know, that little tongue speaking that you do, you have no idea how far down the bloodline it goes to. You see what I'm saying? Ah, you have no idea. You have no idea how far down the prayer that we pray goes to. To help, to aid. To give somebody fresh breath for the day. And so I wouldn't give up. Amen. I wouldn't give up if I was you. Psalms 56 verse 1. Psalm 56 verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God. For man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppressed me. Okay, Psalm 56, verse 1. Let me read from the New King James. Psalm 56, verse 1. In Jesus' name. Psalm 56, verse 1. Just so that you know that is a demon. Oh, you understand? Oppression, depression. Just, just so you know it's a demon. Psalm 56, verse 1. Want us to deal with this. 56 verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God, what is now, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. The old King James English sometimes, you know, might be a little bit too much, but the new King James. Listen to this, listen to this, Sister Cheryl. Catch your revelation. What is now? Listen, that means that every day, He's fighting with me to oppress me. Now, if he oppresses me, I'm going to go into a depression. 
Listen to this. I'm going to share this with you. You know, um, you know, a call to prayer is coming up. I ain't been done no advertising. You know, I'm waiting for Brother Vincent. You know, like he's taking care of all of that. And you know, the devil is saying nobody's going to show up. You know, it's going to be a flop. Be honest with you. So you know what? This morning, you know what I did? You know, do you remember the last time I came to America? I had to go back to London, then to come back to Ghana, okay? So I have a return ticket from last year, you know. So I called my sister. I said, hey, because I was supposed to leave Ghana, like, yesterday. But I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, that's too, I don't want to leave Mekai for that long. So I, I, I want to push it back, to, you know, further down in a month. So my sister went and sorted everything out for me. And then she sent me the new information. So, I, you know, I think I leave on the 20th or the 21st, you know. Uh, I leave Ghana. I leave Ghana to go back to London. Then from London, I just stay a couple of days, and I'll make my way back to, you know, to to New York. Then you know, once I'm in New York, I'm in America. Okay. But the battle that I'm fighting is who's going to show up. The depression and that oppression spirit is trying to eat into my psyche. So guess what I did, Sister Cheryl? Just a few minutes before I came on, I started taking my clothes, started folding my clothes. So I put my clothes in a suitcase. Because I'm trying to drown out that oppressive voice. Is it freezing? If it's freezing, let me know. Let me see the weather out there. If it's rain. No, the weather is okay. Is it freezing? In the name of Jesus. It's not freezing. Okay. Thank you. So that means I check your connection. Okay. So that oppressive voice wants to say that it ain't going to work. So I started packing my clothes, getting myself together because this, this conference will still come on and God's name will still be exalted. Psalm 56 verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. So, Sister Cheryl... Sister Cheryl, how long is the duration of the fight? According to the word of the Lord, how long is the duration of the fight? Does it last for one minute? Does it last for two minutes? I want you to answer the question. Okay, Sister Cheryl, it lasts all day. So, so, so why then do I not spend time, what just now, in prayer to counteract the fight which has come to me even though I did not ask for the fight? You know, this is not the Floyd Mayweather type of fight where, you know, you you plan ahead of time and then you do promotion. Do you know what I'm saying? To promote the fight. Do you know what I'm saying? That you have a day that you're going to fight and every round is like two, three, four minutes, if that. Okay? Do you know what I'm saying? So it is not the boxing type of fight that we're engaging. It is not the WWE type of fight that's fake anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? It is more like, you know that one that is not gaining popularity, that UFC type of fight, where it is like, you know, it is hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's like you are able to use any part of your body. But you know what? With the UFC, at least there's a referee, you know, but with the type of fight that you and I are engaging, there is no referee because the devil doesn't fight fair. But what this now, in you and I, we've been programmed to be winners. We've already won. All we need to do is show up on the battlefield. Show up on the battlefield. Show up on the battlefield and proclaim the victory. Brothers and sisters, it's a, it's a wrestling match all day. I don't know about you, but you got to fight some of these demons. Sometimes you need to do something. You know, sometimes you may not have to say anything. You just have to act. So, you see, sometimes you don't have to, you just have to, I just have to do something to let the devil know that, oh, I know what you're trying to put into my spirit, but it's not going to work. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go to Psalm 61 verse 8. Go to Psalm 61 verse 8. Remember 15, 56 verse 1. Okay, but 61 verse 8. In the name of Jesus. Power and might belongs to my God forever and ever. Amen. Power and might belongs to my God forever and ever. 
61 verse 8. 61 verse 8. Well, just now. So, so I will sing praise to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. My God. I will sing praise to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. I never knew there was so much power in that single word, daily. I will sing praise to you daily so that I may be able to perform my vows on a daily basis. What are my vows? The vow that I have made, this vow that I've taken upon myself to walk right before God, to be able to provide for my family, to be able to make ends meet. For me to be able to do it, I have got to invoke the name of Jehovah. Are you, are you struggling to meet your vows? Could it be because you're not praising the name Jehovah? These are the two scriptures that I want to be in your spirit this morning. Psalm 58, 56 verse 1 and Psalm 61 verse 8 in the name of Jesus. Watch this now. When that oppressive force comes against you to try to fight you mentally, physically, emotionally. Watch this now. We are asking Jehovah to be merciful to us. Why is he going to be merciful to us? Because we are praising his name as we've come together. We are glorifying his name as we come together. We are proclaiming that there is no name that can lift off oppression there is no name that can lift off depression in the mighty name of jesus and i'm charging you this morning to rise up and claim that victory in no other name but in the mighty name of jesus in the name of jesus holy spirit i welcome you holy spirit i lift you up creator of the universe, I magnify you, that your name will be sanctified, that your name will be lifted up, that your name emotionally, Father God, will not be used against me psychologically in Jesus' mighty name, Father, as we have come together as people who understand the power of prayer, as people who know how to travel and how to break through. In the name of Jesus, Father God, not our will, but that your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, not what we wish for, but God, that which you have said according to your word, in the name of Jesus, Father God, the only language that oppression and depression understand is the language of the blood of Jesus. We speak of eradication and, Father God, illumination in the name of Jesus for that dark cloud of oppression, for that dark cloud of depression. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I disconnect my life and I disconnect my future and I disconnect prayer mantle and I disconnect everybody that we know who is Father God committed to oppression and depression, who has been committed and been handed over to oppression and depression. This morning, Father, we disconnect them from that spirit because, Father, the fact that that word is in your word, that means that there is a spirit attached to it. That means there is a principality which governs oppression. There is a principality that governs depression. And it doesn't care about your status. And it doesn't care about how much money you have. It doesn't care about your color. It doesn't care about your culture. It doesn't care about your status in this life. It will come and try to take you out prematurely in the name of Jesus. And so we stand upon the word of the Lord, which has been given to us in the book of Psalm 56 verse 1. That Father, please be merciful unto us, so that oppression will not take over us. Please be merciful unto us so that negativity will not be able to take over us. Please be merciful unto us so that, Father, the attacks of the enemy shall not prevail. Please be merciful unto us. Please be merciful unto us. Please be merciful unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we are calling upon this name that is superior and powerful. We are calling upon this name that is majestic. We are calling upon this name that is unique. That is the name of Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose back again on the third day to defeat oppression, to defeat depression, to defeat oppression. 
to defeat depression as we clap these hands and father as we stomp our feet if there is oppression and depression in our lives father we drive it out because the word of God has come to fill that void in the name of Jesus if there is oppression and depression in our lives father we drive it away and we command the name of Jesus to be lifted up against oppression and depression in the name of Jesus we command oppression and depression to lose us and let us go to lose us and let us go to get out of our lives to get out from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus oppression and depression we speak to you this morning my God your children who are being oppressed at school ha ah, in the name of Jesus listen oppression that is trying to eat up your children because they are being oppressed by some somebody is trying to swallow them up in school in the name of Jesus my God that is bringing that oppression most of the time these kids that wild out and take out the guns and go kill go maim go try to destroy it is because there is something that is going on on the inside which triggers that response it is a death assignment that is carried with that oppressive gene but what just now we excommunicate and we disconnect your loved ones from that assignment in the name of jesus come on take up the prayer in psalm 61 verse 8 I will sing praise unto your name forever. My God, for me to perform my daily assignment, I will lift up the name of the Lord because what is now, he will give me the strength to perform that assignment. He will give me the power to perform that assignment. He will give, listen to me, when I'm being told that it is impossible, my God, when everything around me is saying it's impossible, when I lift up a song of praise, when I lift up a song of worship, my God, he will give me the inner tenacity to break through when I lift up the name of the Lord when I when I magnify him when I say glory be to the name of the Lord when I say Jesus I bow down and I worship you when I thank him and I am grateful to him and I say God I know what the report of man is saying. I know if it was left to man alone, this is really impossible, God. And if I've got to be honest and stand in the courthouse and not be biased and maybe even put my faith to the side, God, I would laugh at me because it is impossible for me to see myself doing what my spirit is telling me to do because I was disqualified way before this time. But God, as the man of God said in those days, if something is going to have breath on its inside, that breath has to come from you. If something is going to have the ability to live this life, then the sanctioning has to come from you, God. I don't have the means on my own. But I know the one who holds the keys. I don't have the means to make this a reality. But I know the one who possesses power. I know the one who has the authority. I know the one who is gracious. I know the one who is majestic. And he happens to be my daddy. Father, I've made mistakes. 2018. I know you told me I shouldn't have gone there. But I went, God. But you, oh God. You are faithful and you are everlasting. And I'm asking you this morning, God, where we as a family have made mistakes. Where we have doubted you, God. Please forgive us. Forgive us, oh God. Don't let us go back to that place once again. In the mighty name of Jesus, for the last 30 seconds. Glorify the name of the Lord and lift up the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Ha! My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven. And I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help. Cometh from the Lord, 
which may have an Stop looking to man. With man all things are impossible. But with the God that we serve, all things are possible. With man is impossible. Man will tell you it's impossible. Whenever you feel that impossibility spirit trying to take over your life, it's a shame that just take a minute out and begin to sing that song that is in your spirit, my God. Anytime they try to tell you that you can't do it, just 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 pull into the source. You know that river that's in your belly? Some of you don't know the river is in your belly. Do you know what I'm saying? It flows living water. Nothing that should come out of your spirit should be negative because it's supposed to be living. It's supposed to be powerful. It's supposed to be authentic. It is supposed to be genuine. So go to your source. Can these bones live? Oh, yes, I know. Is there power in the name of Jesus? Yes, there is power. Will Prayer Mantle Conference 2018 be a success? Yes, it will be because Jesus is on the throne. Ha! In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory be to the name of the Lord. We magnify and we adore him. We proclaim that this is the acceptable year. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Please write these two scriptures down. Sorry I couldn't come on yesterday. You know, I went, you know I went for deliverance yesterday. You know there's always something that's happening in deliverance. Yesterday there was a story that stuck out to me. Uh, do you remember a while ago I told you about a girl that took about four hours for deliverance? Do you remember? I think probably about a month ago. Do you remember? I told you her story. Well, you know, she's been coming for the deliverance continuously and um. I was asking them because I missed last week. I was saying, okay, what happened? He said, Brendan, and they were saying to me, well, you know, she was in a relationship with a, you know, you know, with a gentleman. And I think the relationship, the relationship was kind of like, you know, it's, it's falling away. But it's like the, the boyfriend or the ex-boyfriend rather has gotten a new girlfriend who I believe feels like the guy still has feelings for the, you know, for this girl. And so, literally, a spirit of death has been released to come and kill the girl. And so yesterday, Sister Cheryl, as we were praying for her, she, the spirit mentions the name of this girl. And, you know, like, and then basically, if, uh, you know, the, this new girl in the life of her ex-boyfriend, I think her, her, her ex-boyfriend died. So, you know, she mentioned the name, or the, the spirit mentioned the name of the ex-boyfriend and said, yeah, we killed him, and now we're coming for you. And so yesterday in the we have, you know, we had to conduct a funeral service, spiritually, kill that spirit, you know, just get rid of that assignment of her life. And so, you know, when, when I come back, I'm so tired, I'm so shattered, you know, because, you know, I'm called for deliverance ministry. You know, and then I also dealt with, uh, with a young girl, she's about 21 years of age. Uh, anybody from Ghana on here, she comes from the Volta region. Now, when I say Volta region, if you want to know anything about the demonic in Ghana, that's the region that you go to, the Volta region. Very demonic. Very demonic. The marine kingdom. And so this young, this girl, 21 years of age, prayed for her deliverance. You know, she, she, has, she has been married, okay, in the marine kingdom. She, you know, she's married. And so, I mean, she was spitting, you know, she, her head hit me a couple of times. It was really warfare. And so when I finished, I sat down with her and I started talking. I said, can you understand what I'm saying? She said, yes. I said, okay, well, when we're praying for you, this and this and this and this is what happened. The Spirit said it has a covenant with your family. Okay, you're, it has a covenant with your family. And so it wasn't going to let you go. So anytime you try to remove the ring, for, you know, I divorced her from that spirit. I annulled that marriage. My God. You know, Sister Cheryl, that's why real deliverance ministry, you're not supposed to put it on TV. You know what I'm saying? Because... Because, you know, uh, uh, you know um, people who don't understand it, and, you know, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to, uh, you know, uh, also shield, Sister Sherry, you know, people's privacy, Sister Winita, because, you know, somebody might be in a workplace and they might, you know, uh, you know they might uh, say something, right? Now, it's not them, it's the spirit. You see what I'm saying? 
And so something may have happened at work that the spirit used them to do. So if you put it on TV, you know, it's happened several times where people have lost jobs and people have lost careers because, you know, somebody who just wants to be popular posted deliverance or lives. That's why most people don't go to church no more, especially when they know that, you know, they, they, they have some challenges. And I believe real deliverance, it has to be done in private because they confess some things that they've done. Amen. They confess. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, um, uh, the, the, the young girl, she told me a few things when she was born. You know, she, she said that somebody took her from her mother and, you know, uh, almost like buried her in some sort of pit. So listen to this, and I said to Sherry, it blew my mind. Because I told her afterwards, I said, I know, I said, listen, you were fighting as you were. You know, I said, it took us about 30 minutes to get this thing out of you. And so she said to me that, a couple of, you know, like for the last couple of weeks, she dreams, she hears them, even when she's at work, she hears the marine people coming for her. She said they've warned her that if she says anything to anybody, they will kill her. So she said most of the time, nighttime, she's crying because they come and beat her. She says, Cheryl. And you know, the Ghanaian girl, so she was very, a bit shy to say this to me. She said she would wake up. Sister Cheryl, sister, we need to hear this. She said she would wake up and she would see sperm, like, you know, on the bed like sperm she'll go to the bathroom and she will see like on her body you know when she checks herself that something was trying to have intercourse with her she said brenda and i said to her so why didn't you say nothing she said well they warned me that if i told my brother they would kill me they would beat me so most of the time at night you know one two in the morning they come and they beat me so i would get up and i'll be up all night she said tamala god is my witness Yesterday deliverance. So I said to her, well, it makes sense because when we're praying for you and we're trying to remove, you know, like, I mean, these are girls, Sister Cheryl, these are, you know, like, they're not strong physically. But yesterday it took two men, myself and another deliverance minister. I had to hold one hand whilst he was administering oil and removing the ring from her finger because they didn't want the ring to be removed. So we annulled the marriage. I canceled the marriage. And she said, they, they said to her that the only reason why they're not able to have full intercourse with her, because every time they show up, they see Jesus, the presence of the Lord. So it always hinders them from, the, that is why there's a struggle. So that's why you see the sperm on the floor. That is, that is what, that is, that is deliverance yesterday for me. That's why I said, don't argue with nobody. You see what I'm saying? The battles that we fight, if the Lord hasn't opened up your eyes to see, you'll have no idea. You see what I'm saying? You have no idea. You know, and in America and in the rest of the world, they've given these kind of things medical names. You see what I'm saying? Medical names. They'll tell that you're crazy. If this girl was in Europe or she was in America, they would probably you know, uh, say she's crazy. But I asked her, I said, how do you feel? She said she felt better, gave her some water to drink, prayed on the water, gave it to her to drink. So when you don't, when, when, you, when you don't see me, pray for me. Okay? When you don't see me on scope, pray for me. That's what I'm called to do. That's what I said to you, you know, one of my battles is to share, and I need you to pray for me for clarity. If I engage myself in ministry in Ghana, you know, I don't want prayer mantle to suffer, as in you. You see what I'm saying? So, I, I'm kind of like very, I try not to get myself involved too much in deliverance in Ghana. Because, you know, if I if I start doing it, I'm just, this is just me thinking to myself, it might mess with, you know, prayer mantle time. That's what I'm saying on Periscope. So, that's why, you know, that's why, you know, I'm very, very, so, you know, I give up my time. To them on Tuesday, they have deliverance on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but I give them Tuesdays and I take Wednesdays for myself. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, pray for me, okay? Pray for me, okay? Oh, yes, the one in there's a whole bunch of, and you know what? These things is all over the place, so it's all in America. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, listen, I guarantee you, sister Sharon, you know, some of you have seen when I've traveled America at Prophet Khan, I've been to mega church, you know, big, big churches. As soon as the power of God hits, people were manifesting. Churches that you see on TV on a Sunday where everybody's sitting there looking, looking, you know, 
you know, glamorous, looking, makeup, everything, in, you know, Brazilian hair in the right place. Trust me, let the power of God hit and you will see. You will see the man. Most people sitting down there, a lot of the churches, you know, the mega churches, what they're doing is, you know, we are counseling demons. You see what I'm saying? We counsel demons. You know, we sit there and we give them three points, four points. And we suppress the spirit of God. We don't allow that because we have a time schedule to keep to. We have, uh, 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 you know, we, we have an episode, so to speak, that we need to put on TV. So it has to be prim and proper. And so most people watching on the outside, see, it is not what they're looking for. Because what is now, if that's what they're looking for, you know, you know what I mean? They, they, they will find it in the things that they're doing. They're looking for the real, authentic, and the genuine thing. That's why people take up all kinds of stuff, whether it's yoga, whether it's whatever it is. They take it up because they're looking for something. There is a void on the inside of them, and they need something to fill that void. Some of them don't know. They don't know that it's the Holy Spirit that is missing from their lives. Do you understand what I'm saying? God bless you. You understand? So... You know, that's what I'm doing. You know, it's very tiring, though. You know, one thing I learned about the Ghana demons, they don't play. I mean, listen, they come, they tell that. You say, leaves. I ain't going nowhere. Like, they have arguments with you. They're like, they're like I ain't going nowhere. I, listen, listen, we're married. Like, the girl says, I'm married to this girl. And when you try to, listen, like, you know, you can just open somebody's hands just like, it. When, when, when the demon is manifesting, listen to me, I don't care how strong you are. It takes about two or three people just to open up their hands. Because, you know, they ball up their hands because they don't want the oil to hit their hand. And they don't want you to take the ring. So, you know, I had to open up the fingers, put my knee on her, uh, on her one hand and help my, my friend open up the fingers and take off the ring from her hand. You know, once you disconnect the ring, once you take off that ring, you are null in the marriage. And, and there's another one. There's another one where... You know, uh, Sister Sister Marcia, the lady was saying, uh, or the spirit was saying how much they pay. You know, and God said, uh, you know, uh, uh, like we bought it for like 2.5. That's, that's, that's like $5, even less than that, if I'm right. That's how much they sold her for. So, you know, one of the preachers there took money, Ghana money. You know, now remember this, most of the transactions, Sister, and Sister, Sister Marcia, is done in coins. Remember, Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. You see what I'm saying? So most time betrayal, when you're sold, is for coins. And so we took some of the coins, Ghana money, we put it in oil, and then we gave it back to the demon. Like, you know, we said, this is the money, take it. Go bring back what you stole from her. And Sister Man said, you'd be amazed how much power we have because everything that we say, you know, like if you've ever, if you, 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 you know, like when you watch these African movies and especially those dark, dark ones where you see them sitting down, they go to these, Juju men, fetish priests, voodoo people, and they sit down and they cross their legs. Let's let, let you listen to me. You will see people like when we're doing deliverance, they will they will walk, they will sit down, and then they will cross their legs and you tell them, go bring whatever you took from that person, go bring it back. Say this is her womb. Sometimes this is her brain. One girl that we prayed for yesterday, and some of you sisters, hey, I'm gonna say what happened. You know, uh, again, relationship thing. Somebody, I think her boyfriend, you know, likes her boyfriend. So what happened was they took her hair. You know, them Brazilian stuff. I think she had taken one out. So they took her hair. Okay? They took her hair to some whatever. And they, because of that now, she's having mental issues. Pretty young, young girl. But she's having mental issues. So she came yesterday. And the thing started confessing, mentioning the name. Her, you know, it was her friend that she was in school with. My God! She was in school with a girl. The girl took her hair because of this boy. Took the hair to the witch doctor. They wear something, something. You know, because when you take out the hair, your real hair is part of I ain't got no hair, you know, but you know, you know what I mean? When you take out the hair, your real hair, some, you know, is entangled in the DNA. So that's what they use to work against her. Because hair is your glory. I'm getting the practical side of most of the stuff that I learned. You see what I'm saying? And it's happening everywhere. Just, just that preachers, you know, a lot of times don't have that understanding or the revelation. And so whether it's a mega church or whatever, a whole, whole bunch of people suffering. 
So that's what I do when I go when I go on Tuesdays. It's tiring. So whenever you don't see me on school, pray for me. Okay? Pray for me in Jesus' name. And please, please support prayer mantle as you do. Okay? Help me. Hey, I know listen. Please, if you can, okay. I know I called to prayer. We ain't really said nothing. But if you can, you know, like what you did last year, just send a little something, okay? Just so that we come against some cost, we can offset it, okay? God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm not going to go today because I want to spend time with the word and send it to you, okay? Because, um, you know, when I go, it's, it's just intense. It's intense. The more first up, listen, you stand on your feet. And listen, the African demons, right? The African demons, they don't play, you know? Listen, it's the Brenda. They don't play, you know. Like, come on, so I ain't going nowhere. I'm like, get out of it. So, no, I'm not going. So, what do you mean you're not going? So, then, then the spirit will ask you, Who are you? Then they'll give you some dirty look. Oh, who are you? I said, I'm a child of the Most High King. Then they'll kiss their teeth. I'm serious, you know. These are girls that after you've delivered them, they've so shy to even talk to you. But when they are, when the demon is working, they be like, uh, like, 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 who are you again? Like the girl was looking, Lord, looking me up and uh, intimidating me. I'm like, God, please give me strength to do this one. Mr. Diana, say, who are you again? And you, then they'll fold their arms. I said, get out. I'm not going to say, get out. I'm not going to say, get out. Back and forth. I said, do you want me to shoot you? They said, no, 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 please, please. I said, do you want me to shoot you? No, no, please, please. I said, okay, get out of her. I said, she didn't, did she make the covenant? No, who came to make the covenant? Her family people. She said, Diana. I said, well, but she wasn't there. So why are you, why are you messing with her? She don't want you. She said, well, I was there minding my own business. I didn't tell them to come. I said, yeah, but she was not there. I said, you can still keep the rest of the family. Because they ain't, you know, the rest of the family, you know what I mean? Because if I'm going to deal with the rest of the family, that's going to take the whole day. And, you know, furthermore, they need to come and admit to what they've done. I said, this girl don't want you. So let her go. She said, let her go. Listen, I was sweating. I mean, listen, all my clothes were soaking wet. She said, let her go. I won't go. Let her go. Till eventually. I said, okay, I'm going to let her go. I said, let her go. So, you know, that's deliverance. You know, that's why I pray for me, okay, for clarity and direction on, on, on what the Lord. Because, you know, I, listen, when I say I'm tired of church, I'm tired of church as we see it. You know, people need that one-on-one -on -one deliverance. You see what I'm saying? What I see myself doing is having, when the prayer mental center is built, it's like, you know, counsel. You know, like how people go for counseling? But, the, but our kind of counseling is demonic, you know, like, you know, it's casting devils out. So, you know, I don't care what church you go to. You can go to your church, but you know there's something hurt. You know, there's something that's messing with you. Book into prayer mental, come. We do deliverance, and you can go back. That's what I'm saying? I'm not, you know, them churches stuff. Other people can do it. I get bored when I just sit down. You know what I mean? You know, I want some action. I want to call demons out. Okay? So pray for me. So I'm, I'm still waiting for my millionaires to come on prayer mantle so we can build the prayer mantle center. Okay? So God bless you. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, have a blessed day. Let me go finish packing my clothes because I'm, I'm, I'm letting the devil know. Listen, you ain't going to eat me up. I'm coming up. In Jesus' name. So God bless you. Okay, remember the scriptures. Psalm 56 verse 1. Psalm 61 verse 8. Psalm 56 verse 1. And Psalm 61, verse 8. God bless you. Love you all, family. See you later. Pastor Gail, God bless you always. Sister Charlene, Sister Marcia, Sister Mary, every single, every single one of you. Sister Brenda, every single one of you. Sister Tamala, God bless you. Thank you for making prayer mantle a success. Thank you for your giving. I pray that the Lord honors your giving and your sacrifices to this ministry in Jesus' name. No other name. London, I know there's a whole bunch of crazy stuff going there. People getting robbed and, you know, all this stuff going on. The devil is a liar. God give us clarity to decipher what is happening in the realms of the spirit in London. Because the authorities obviously don't have the answers. But God, we know you do. Give us the revelation that we need. If only our church leaders will stop fighting each other. If only people in ministry will stop hating on each other and come together then we'll be able to subvert the plans of the devil. Sister Dinah, yes, I've seen your email. Working on it, praying for you, okay? In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Catch you later. Amen? Ha! I feel, I feel God.
I feel God. Voshava kivosia. Me brekorabasi pika. Zezo karabasia. If you have to go, you can go. It's okay. If you can stay on for a couple of seconds, just speak in tongues, okay? If you have to go, it's okay. No problem. Kirebosha. VCB Kaba. I heard one celebrity. I say celebrity. I don't think she's celebrating Ghana. You know, yeah, looking at LeBron. Ha 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 ha. God bless you. Uh, you know, um, when she tried to put something about speaking in tongues, you know, and I put something on Twitter, I told her to be very careful. You know, some people make comments, you see, like they, gen they generally make no comments and they feel like they get away with it. This same person last year or the year when we had our elections, you know, she was aligned to uh, the party that was in power. And then she said, that she said some very disrespectful things about the opposition, the leader of the opposition. A man old enough not even to be her father, but even her grandfather made a mockery of him. And so when the opposition won the elections, people in the country came against her. Even people showed up at her house. She came up all on TV crying and apologizing. Just recently, she was on the beach or whatever, and then she had an accident, some sort of accident at the beach. But yesterday she put out, I read online, she made some statement about speaking in tongues, that Baha'i don't make no sense. And I said, girl, you better be careful. I'd send her a tweet. I said, be careful. Because you people have loose tongue. And because you say stuff and you think that you get away, be very careful. Never think you can fight the church of Jesus Christ. Never ever think, never ever think you can project evil and prevail. I've been telling you, I've never seen evil prevail. I've never seen evil, and I will never see evil prevail. A whole bunch of people think because they have social media influence, they can make right what God has said is wrong. Am I making sense? Am I making sense, Sister Shirley? So, see, God will say something is wrong, but then I will use my social media influence and the fact that I can take pictures, what just now, Sister Tamala, because I can take pictures and the pictures will come out good because what just now, because of, you know, technology and Photoshop and all of that stuff. But if God has said it's wrong, it doesn't matter how I project it, what just now, it is still wrong. And God ultimately will put me in my place. And a whole bunch of people don't see that. Because they think they're, you know, they're celebrities. They have social media following. Do you, you understand? See, I, don't, I always say this. I don't have a problem. You know, do what you want to do. But when you try to now do what you, use what you have done, which, you know, you know is wrong, or according to the word of God is wrong, but then because you have influence on young people, you now want to project what you have done as the right thing. God will expose you on the very same platform that you use to try to make wrong right. Oh, Lord. See why I don't preach in Ghana. See why I don't preach in Ghana. Ha! So the same platforms... Watch this space. I've told you before. The same platforms that is being used to perpetrate evil. The same platforms that is being used to advance the agenda of wickedness will be the same platform that God will use to swallow them up. And they will not be able to come. You know, people, you know, <laughs> hey, God, don't let me get in trouble. You know, uh, some of these guys, you know, I ain't got no problem being in a relationship or whatever. You know, you're messing around sinning. That's your business. You see what I'm saying? When you try to project it on social media, make it look as if we're in 2018. So, you know, I can be with my boyfriend and my girlfriend, whatever, whatever. That's your business. Okay. But when you try to now present it as right on social media, the reason now you want everybody the young people oh it's okay for me to have a boyfriend and girlfriend you know fl flaunted out there living together them can you know them all that kind of stuff they tell you that you're old school and you're stuck in the old ages whatever whatever you know when you come out and say those things the same platform that you are using to try to advance that agenda god <laughs> will expose you on those same platforms and you go back to deleting pictures deleting posts <laughs> deleting stuff that you two did together because now the relationship is no more
God bless you, saints. I've sent my peace. I'm out. Nobody can buy me. I've already been bought with a price. You see what I'm saying? I don't preach for money. I don't say what I say for money. Nobody can buy me. Every The last two meetings that you heard me go to, when I went, I didn't take it, and I gave. I gave to support. I paid my own way to go. I paid for my own food when I was in the hotel. Praise the Lord. When I went to preach for the students at the university, guess what I did? Guess what I did? I, I took food for them to eat afterwards. I didn't take not a cent from them. So I'm free. Nobody can buy me. I'm unbuyable. I'm not lying on Messi. You can't put a price tag on me. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not LeBron. You can't put, you know, you can't put, you know, a price tag on me. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm unbuyable. I've already been bought with the price. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Sister Diana, keep, keep the faith. Keep praying. Okay? Keep praying because, you know, he loads us daily with benefits. And we're also fighting all day according to the word of the Lord. If we don't fight, then that thing will swallow us up. But we will not be eaten up alive by no demonic entity. In Jesus' name, I release you today to be a bearer of the load from God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Catch you later. Bye-bye.